Good morning. Welcome to Destiny. I'm thankful you guys are here, and I hope you came expecting because today is Pentecost Sunday. And I know that, you know, we've been praying and expecting a move of God today, and just agree with us. Um, if you're not already standing, just uh, stand with me for the reading of the word, if you would. We'll be reading from Joel 2, 28 through 32 in the New King James Version. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and the pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in, the Mount, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Lord God, we just thank you for today, God. We thank you, Father, that we have all came to gather here today, Father. I am asking, God, that you just move in the midst of your people today. Lord, in this um, sanctuary, God, with the teens and the children's ministry, God, we just ask that you just have your way today, God. Anoint the music, anoint Bishop as he brings forth the word. Father God, I just ask that you have your way, God. We just thank you that we are all able to gather here once again. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory, 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 glory. Is your faith up today? I feel God is going to do something spectacular. So get your faith up today and let's worship him. Let's worship him till we have an experience with him. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. I've celebrated, sweet drink I've tasted, they 
Jesus, our conqueror, our king. Nobody can beat him. He's great. 
bless your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. How many came expecting this morning? Did you just roll out of bed because it's your normal Sunday routine or did you come expecting? So we want to engage the presence of the Lord this morning. We want to draw close to him as he draws close to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want all of our worship to go to him. Come on, let's just begin to fill this house. You do whatever you have to do. Wave your hands, open your mouth. Just begin to worship him. God, we bless your name, Jesus. Lord, you are the word.
like streams in the valley swell with the rain let the songs of my heart we're looking for with your worship don't just clap your hands but open your mouth God is attracted to our worship let all my worship let all my praise all my worship all my praise let it flow let it flow let it flow when something flows it's unobstructed that means it just flows freely it just keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going I guarantee if you go back in your mind and begin to think of the goodness of God, worship will begin to flow, flow, flow. And you know it's nobody but Him. Nobody but Him can do what He's done for us. So we give you worship today, God. We magnify you today, God. We recognize that without you, we could do nothing. Without you, we would be nothing. Without you, some of us would not even exist today, so our worship belongs to you. Every hallelujah belongs to you. Let your worship flow, my son. Glory to your name, Jesus. We love you, we love you. 
Jesús que tenemos que dar. of worship we're creating rivers of worship I don't know if you sense it but it's flowing down every aisle it's flowing somebody's needs are being met somebody that have been so
reason why the day of Pentecost existed is because believers wanted more. Jesus told them, don't leave Jerusalem until you get this power. So they all gathered in an upper room because they were waiting for the more. And the Bible says that they were all in one place, on one accord. That is so mild. came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind it's because everybody had the same mindset it was more he promised me more so I'm gonna open up my spirit and receive more I'm gonna open up my heart and receive more whatever it is that he has for me that's what I'm coming after I realize I can't do it by myself I need his more so open up your heart with your hands lifted in the air open up your heart and allow God to begin to pour in. I know the message is coming, and I know it's gonna be powerful, but God is doing something right now. With your hands lifted and your heart open. With your hands lifted and your heart open. In a willing spirit, I'm telling you, God is pouring out the more right now. God is pouring out the more. God is pouring out the more. Come on, sing more. your strategies, your whatever it is that you've been hanging on to, kick that out and make more room for him to give the more. He's doing it right now. He's doing it right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, listen, just a moment already has been said this is Pentecost Sunday and it has some special significance of course in the body of Christ and what I want to, to just tell everybody in the room there will be an opportunity at the end of the service and we're gonna believe God that anybody in this room that is not filled with the Spirit will get filled in the Spirit today right that's the that's the and here's, here's the thing I need you to hear. I believe it is in St. Luke chapter 11. Somebody help me if that's not it. And in, in, in the gospel according to St. Luke, Jesus said, all you have to do, the, the criteria for receiving the Holy Spirit is just ask him. Well, you know, last night was Saturday. I got a little loose. You know, I did some stuff, you know. Yeah, we all did some stuff. Hopefully not the same stuff, but we, we did some stuff. <laughs> you don't have to clean yourself up. You just have to repent. You don't have to roll on the floor, perform some kind of demonstration. The only criteria is to ask him. Jesus said, if you, if you ask me for a fish, will I give you a serpent? I'm not going to give you a snake. Uh, over the years, I've heard people, well, you know, I'm not sure about 
uh, that speaking in tongues stuff, you know, uh, some of it, uh, you know, I, I might, it might be the devil. Listen, it's not going to be the devil. Jesus said if you ask him for a fish, he's not going to give you a serpent. If you ask him for bread or an egg, he's not going to give you a rock or he's not going to give you something that you can't use. Are y'all still here? Yeah, and, and so we know it's, it's an act of faith and we've got to use our faith. We get it. But you don't have to be afraid. You Listen, you are amongst friends. And just by faith, I want to speak this out because we're anticipating, even throughout the rest of this service, whether it's the rest of the worship time, whether it's during the message, uh, whenever it is, that when God moves on you, just go ahead and ask him. He said he will give the Holy Spirit freely to those that ask him. It's so weird because sometimes we are afraid to ask. But you can ask him, and he won't push you away. So, Father, we thank you for the spirit that we feel in this place now. And we know you are here right now. And we've got a plan. We have an order of service, all of that stuff. But we want you to know that you are in charge. And we came on this particular Sunday even with expectation. On the day of Pentecost, your word says, and they all were filled and began to speak in other tongues, in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the language, the utterance. So God, we're believing that nobody will leave this service the same. And we just right now, we repent of our sins. We admit that we were wrong and you are right. See, we move away from the things of the evil one and move toward you in the name of Jesus. We allow your word to take preeminence in our lives. So we're asking in Jesus' name to fill us again. Fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit. We give you praise. We honor you in this moment. And when we ask for more of you, that's what we mean. You can't get any bigger, but you can get bigger in us. So fill us again. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap your hands and bless him. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen, amen. Amen. You can have your seats if you just have to. Praise God. This is the day the Lord has made, and I'll rejoice and be glad in it. How about you? Glad to see all of you in the house of God on this Memorial Day weekend. Amen. Hope you're enjoying. You know, we got some great weather uh, this weekend, and so we're thankful for that and for opportunity maybe to spend some time outside, spend some time with your families, whatever uh, your plans are this weekend. Amen. But we're thankful that we're in the house of God. I'm not going to let the holiday stop me from worshiping God. Amen. So we're thankful for all of you. Thank you for joining us online. Those of you who are joining us online, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Listen, is anybody here for the very first time? Won't make you say anything. If you're here for the first time, just wave your hand. Anybody? God bless you. Thank you for being here. Amen. I see you. God bless you. Good to see you. Welcome to all of you who are here for the first time. If you are tuning in online for the very first time, uh, just put I'm new in the chat or a, a wave or something like that. Someone will re respond to you. Thank you uh, for joining us. Uh, if you would be so kind, if you're willing to do that, if you have a smartphone kind of like this, uh, you can text the word welcome to this number, 765-612-0809. There'll be a little message on there and also an opportunity for you to let us know how you like the service and uh, whether or not your experience was a good one. Uh, if it's not so good, it's okay. We need to know that too. Make some adjustments uh, as necessary. But we're thankful that you are here. Come on, Destiny, let's give our first time guests a good God bless you. Thank you for being here. And I'll, I'll, I'll add my little two cents. You, you come to the right place at the right time. 
Amen. And God is moving on Pentecost Sunday. We're going to explain all of that uh, in just a few minutes. And yeah, I don't know about you, but I love Jesus. I, I, I can remember, you know, I've been saved this year 40 years. And I, I can remember my life before Christ. It's like B.C., you know what I'm saying? And I tell you, I was a mess, B.C. And I, I, I know I was a mess, and I can look back and see how God has changed my life. And so I'm saying that to let you know, no matter what you've done in your life, no matter how bad you think you are, whatever, that's what Jesus comes in our life for. We don't have to clean up before he gets here. Listen, in fact, you can't clean up. You, you can't clean your life up before Christ. But when he comes in, he starts moving in your spirit. He starts giving you different thoughts. And I'm just so thankful for the Holy Ghost. And I'm believing God that everybody in here will be filled before this day is over. Amen. We're going to explain all of that, what all that means uh, in just a moment. Amen. I don't have any announcements. Anybody got anything that I'm supposed to be doing? Just making sure. I just work here now, you know. <laughs> all right. Well, let's stand on our feet. Amen. Find two, three, four, five people. Give them a good God bless you. Amen. Fist bump, elbow bump, high five, something. Smile and be friendly. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Praise God. All right, as you are making your way back to your seats, let's praise God for the ministry of giving. How about that? Let's do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen, amen. Now, you know, when I, when I get excited about giving, I just want you to know I'm not faking. This is, this is not a technique, a pastoral technique to try to get you to give more money or any of that kind of foolishness. I, I love Jesus, and I know how far he's brought me from. And it is his goodness and his mercy that has brought me this far. And I am just so thankful for the opportunity to give uh, back into the kingdom of God. And I know it has something to do with even how I'm living even right now. Because God, you can't beat him giving. God is a giver, and so we're thankful for his uh, faithfulness to us. Even, listen, even when we're not faithful, he's faithful. He's a good God. Amen. All the ways to give electronically are on the screen. You can give that way. If you're online, you can do the same. 
Amen. If you're in the room and you want to use an envelope or something like that, there's an envelope uh, back in the back. There are envelopes by that slot, by the media room back in the back next to the door. Uh, and uh, on your way out, you can get something and put it in the slot there. The right people will get that. And we're so thankful for your faithfulness. I just want to say once again, thank you for your faithfulness. Those of you who have been here and been consistent in your giving, thank you so much. You're helping to make it happen. And all of the things that we're doing here locally with our staff and with our local ministries and all the ministries that we have going on around the world, you are helping to make it happen. So thank you for your generosity. Amen. Y'all ready? All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for every gift, every giver. Thank you for the opportunity to give. You've been better to us than what we deserve. So we say thank you. It's not a debt that we owe. It's a seed that we sow. The seed that leaves our hand does not leave our life, but it goes into our future where it multiplies and then returns again. So we thank you. We thank you for every person, every family, every life. Get all of the glory. Everything we have belongs to you. So we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. The word of God is coming in a moment. Watch the screens for our announcements. Amen. Hi, it's Stephanie. We hope you are enjoying your time so far here at Destiny. Just a reminder, if you are a first-time guest, please take a moment to text the word WELCOME to 765-612-0809. We would love to get some information to you. Again, you can text the word WELCOME to 765-612-0809 and one of our pastors will connect with you. Each week, we take a brief moment to let you know what's happening around Destiny. We want to provide you and your family every opportunity possible to jump in and get involved. So let's take a look at a few things that are coming up right here at Destiny. Are you ready to take the next step in your journey with Christ? Baptism is a great way to publicly declare your love for Jesus and announce your decision to follow Him. There are a few ways that you can sign up for baptism here at Destiny. The easiest way is to go to our mobile app and click the Made New tab. Put your name in that secure space and one of our pastors will contact you. If you are attending in person today, you can also visit the information station right outside in the lobby to sign up there. Make sure you sign up soon so that we can prepare for you. What's up everybody, it's Isaiah with you. You know what time it is? It's church camp time. That's right, this year's theme is called out. So I'm calling you out. Mark your calendars down for July 9th through July 14th from ages 9 to 19. This year's entry fee is only $65 and that includes your snack pass. There will be a QR code right here for you to register. You can also do it in the back on our TV screen. So if you have any questions, I'll be out there about the camp or even about the registering. Until then, I'll see you then. Here at Destiny, our mission is to love God, love others, and to serve the world. Through your continued giving, we are blessed to financially support 12 organizations impacting lives locally and abroad. Let's take a look at how Destiny is fulfilling our mission and how you can continue to help. In response to the need for clean water, Life Outreach, along with our mission partners, have drilled over 7,000 wells. Now, over 7 million people in 20 countries are living a life free from the fear of sickness and death because they have a fresh water well in their village. This, this is what love is all about, the fulfillment of seeing Life Outreach International water well right here so that these children can grow up and have healthy, happy lives. If you've helped us do this, thank you so much. James and Betty, I bet this makes you very, very happy. But the need is still great. Let's do this again. And
and again and again till this is the norm in Zambia and in villages all around the world. Cheers. Since 2015, Destiny Christian Center has given over $20,000 to support clean water well efforts through Life Outreach International. Additionally, by walking in the Global 6K for Water and donating to World Vision Outreach through Jason and Stacy Buck and the East Central Indiana team, just last week, you helped the team to raise $58,178 to provide clean water for 1,233 children. Thank you for your continued giving and support. Thanks again for joining us. If you have any questions, you can stop by the info tables in the lobby or message us in the chat on any of our online platforms. The best way to not miss out on anything at Destiny is to download the Destiny mobile app from your app store. You can search for Destiny Muncie and you'll find us. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you next week. Man, anybody ready for the word today? You guys ready? Okay, I'm, I'm being told no children, no youth ministry in the back today. That's what I was just told. So I guess you got to listen to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Hey, just one announcement uh, as you're standing. Uh, I want to remind you once again, we've got, we've got the mobile app all ready to go. If you are interested in being a small group host, small group leader, we're going to have some training. We'll be announcing next week. We'll let you know when that training is going to start, which, which will be in the next week or two, um, to be trained to be a small group host leader. Listen, it's not going to be a hard thing, and so we want to may, uh, maybe dispel any misgivings about that. Um, Brother Larry Swearingen is going to teach that class and make sure that we're good to go. We're cranking up our small groups again, and so we're looking forward to that. Amen? Everybody all right? All right. I almost never say this, but uh, why don't you uh, text somebody or go, go to our hashtag. Our hashtag today is power is here. Power is here. So use that hashtag and send it to somebody. However that works. <laughs> Let's do that. All right, grab your Bibles if you haven't. Grab your Bibles if you have the Word of God in your phone, in your tablet, whatever you have. If you've got a paper Bible, grab that. We're going to do our confession of faith. Amen. Just repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. I believe God's Word. I'm a believer not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same after hearing God's word. I am being transformed by the ever living, uncompromising, never changing, ever powerful word of God. I will never be the same in Jesus name. Everybody believing, everybody serving, and everybody giving. Amen, amen. Remain standing. Father, we need your help. None of me and all of you. Move by your spirit. We're not putting any limitations on you. I know you want to fill us with your spirit more than we want to be filled. So let your will be done today. We break up the fallow ground of our own hearts that we might receive the engrafted word of God that is able to save our souls. So we honor you in this moment. We give you praise. It is a privilege to serve you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, our opening text today is Acts chapter 1.
In Acts chapter 1, um, Jesus said something I believe that is extremely critical uh, to our lesson today. My message is more uh, of a teaching message today, but at, as we end everything up with, with the scripture, we're going to be believing God for an impartation and to be inspired to receive today. Amen. So you're in the right place at the right time. Acts chapter 1, starting at verse 4 in the New King James Version, the word of the Lord reads, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Is to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So far, the scripture. Amen. You may be seated. As you've heard several times today, around the world, literally, uh, this is Pentecost Sunday. And it's not that deep. But Pentecost, just penta just means 50. Um, and in this particular uh, case, 50 days after the Passover. And, and uh, that was for the Jewish feast and the Jewish people back in the day, so to speak. They celebrated Passover. But for us as Gentiles, most of us are Gentiles, um, it's 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's really what Pentecost really is all about. And so let me just explain before we get to our major text here. Um, to be Pentecostal just means we identify with the Holy Spirit's entrance into the church age and the accompanying manifestations of the Holy Spirit. So let me go a little deeper here uh, into this. What, what happens with human beings? Let me just, can I just talk to you? Okay, three of you I can talk to. How about the rest of y'all? All right. <laughs> what, what mankind, what we tend to do as people, if I can be a little transparent, what we tend to do is we have a bad habit of changing the narrative. And what we do, we change things around to suit our own comfort level. So things can be really solid, it can be clear, it could be concise, it could be full of virtue, all of that kind of stuff. And the further we, the, the, the further we get away from that time or where we heard it or that truth or whatever, the more susceptible we are with our own emotions and feelings and experiences, all that, the more susceptible we are to changing it around to fit into our world. The problem with that is our world might not be the same as God's world for us. And God's word lets us know what that world is like. And so when we talk about uh, being Pentecostal, it has turned into a denominational issue. It's turned into uh, uh, a religious thing that, that supposedly means some stuff. It's like, okay, if you say you're Baptist, that's supposed to mean something. What kind of church you go to? I'm Baptist. And sometimes, depending on who you talk to, they say it with some authority and some pride. And you, you, you go from that person, you say something to somebody else, uh, you know, what kind of church you go to? I'm Presbyterian. They say that with some 
some pride as well. I'm, in, in other words, I'm glad to be connected with this group. All right. So when we talk about Pentecostal uh, in non-Pentecostal circles, oftentimes Pentecostals, so to speak, get characterized with certain types of demonstration and certain types of expression that is in some circles uh, outside the norm. In other words, y'all don't know how to act. (laughs) <laughs> we don't do that in church. And depending on what kind of church it is and the style and all that kind of thing, it could go from one extreme to the other. Well, listen, Pentecostalism doesn't mean any of that. It's just talking about 50 days after the resurrection. That's <laughs> basically what's up. And so what, what it can mean, and what, to give some more clarity, is, okay, what happened? Why are we calling it Pentecostal? What's up with that? It points to the scripture that I uh, alluded to. We're going to read some, some more in, in a minute. Um, on the day of Pentecost, when, it, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all gathered in one place on one accord, and the Bible says that they heard a sound. Something happened, all right? And so a lot of times Pentecostalism gets tied to speaking in tongues. Now, let me, let me make this clear, just in case you wandered in here off the street. We believe in speaking in tongues here. And the reason we believe in it, listen, listen, the Bible says it. This is a Bible church. And this whole um, series that I'm talking to is talking about the kingdom of God. And no offense, I don't mean to offend anybody, but whatever God says we need, we need. If we're going to operate in the kingdom of God, kingdom principles, with kingdom power, we need what Jesus said we need. And we can't allow the devil to change the narrative and tone it down and we don't need all that and it don't take all that. Listen, I'm telling you, it takes all that and some more our evil world we're living in. So I thought I'd just mention that. Uh, being Pentecostal is nothing negative at all. It just denotes, uh, you know, the day of Pentecost, basically. That's just what that means. And it has come to mean uh, we believe in all of the Bible. The gifts are still here. Are y'all still here? <laughs> the gifts are still working. Fivefold ministry is still valid. Ephesians chapter 4 apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers are still in the earth. All five gifts, they're called ascension gifts. I'm not going to teach on that today, but I need you to understand some of these things because I'm going to believe God with you and for you that at the end of the service, we're going to ask God for the power of the Holy Spirit because we need him. And that's what we're preaching today. The power is here. We don't have to wait. The power is here. Of course, in, in, in uh, some circles of Pentecostalism, even what, where, how I came up, um, we have this word called tarry. That was translated by King James. It just means wait, but it, it means tarry here till uh, I come. And then it, it kind of got, the narrative got changed around again uh, to tarry for the Holy Ghost. So tarry doesn't just mean wait, it means do something while you wait. And I won't go into all of that, but I just want to announce to you, you don't have to tear it no more. You don't have to wait anymore. The power of God is here. That's what Jesus was talking about. Wait till you get this power, and now he is here. So there are all kinds of functions of the Holy Spirit. So we're not just talking about tongues. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But that's not what we're talking about in totality. The Holy Spirit is power. Uh, Acts chapter 10, 
Verse 38, here, here it is now. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The power of God, the, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, uh, when you talk about anointing, it is the ability of God. It is beyond our natural. It becomes supernatural. All right? So the Holy Spirit, who is not an it, is he. Y'all tracking? It's not an it. It is he, okay? He is he, I guess I should say. He empowers us to advance the kingdom of God. So speaking in tongues is a, is a vital ability that the Holy Spirit gives. Speaking in tongues is not synonymous with the Holy Spirit. It's not the same thing. He gives you the ability to speak in tongues. I need you to hear me. I need you to maybe bind up the enemy and, and all the things that will come against your mind because today you're going to get free of a whole bunch of junk that has kept you from receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So the speaking in tongues, according to the Bible, uh, has three different purposes while being the same spirit. Same Holy Ghost, but he has different functions. And I say three just in terms of the speaking in other tongues. Uh, the, the Holy Ghost is for more than just speaking in tongues. The Holy Ghost is in you, and that's why it's so important for you to receive. I believe it's so important. Um, that the reason why Jesus said, listen, don't go out. You've been hanging with me for three years, but don't go out and try to do nothing until you get this power. And if you need the power, and maybe you need it more than what you think you need it, the power of God is not just to speak in tongues. It's so you can live right. Well, pastor, I'm just struggling. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. That, I, I'm not saying you won't always struggle with something. I'm just saying when you get the power of God on your life, he helps you to get over some stuff. He helps you to resist the temptation that comes from this evil world. Mm -hmm. And some things he helps us with, we don't even know he's helping. But he's in there. And I don't know about you, I want everything God has for me. Oh, yeah, I want everything. So I want to build your faith to believe, to receive today. So I'm going to just go to the strip scripture, as you see in, in the sermon notes in, in your mobile app. Uh, I don't have a lot of points. I just got scripture. And so we're going to expound on these things, and prayerfully, by the end of the sermon, you'll be ready to receive. All right, the first one, and we've already alluded to, Acts chapter 2. Starting at verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And utterance is, is just means it gave them the language, gave them the, uh, the ability uh, to speak. And so this was the entrance of the Holy Spirit into the earth realm so that every single person could receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, could receive being filled with the Spirit. Before this, only certain people got filled with the Spirit. All right? So Jesus, he comes here to save us, to deliver us. He, he lives, he dies, he's resurrected. He becomes the firstborn among many brethren, as the scripture talks about. And now we have an opportunity to be born again, as he talked to Nicodemus about in St. John chapter 3. So now we're in the church age when he says, listen, don't leave uh, until you get this power. Then when the day of Pentecost comes, the Holy Spirit shows up in a dramatic way. Now, according to my study in the Word of God, this is a very unique occurrence. Sometimes when God does something uh, the first time or in a new way or it, when he ushers in something different, he comes in with a bang. 
And so I'm not sure that this in particular has ever happened uh, before uh, or since, quite frankly. And so what happens is the Bible describes this manifestation of the Spirit of God. So they're there waiting in the upper room. They're doing what Jesus said. They're all on one accord in one place. Listen, why, this sounds almost redundant, but it's not. Listen, we can all be in one place, but not on one accord. What would happen if everybody got on one accord? Not just in one place, not just in proximity, not just in the room, but we were all believing God for the same thing. Have the same heart, the same quest for the things of God. Some monumental things can happen. And I believe that's why he wrote that. When they were all together in one place and on one accord, the Bible said there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Now, I don't know about you, but when I got filled with the Spirit, wasn't no wind blowing. (laughs) So this was a unique thing. In addition to that, the Bible, it, it, it describes divided tongues like fire and sat upon each of them. In other words, they could actually see this phenomenon. Now, I don't know why we would be shocked because we are serving a God that created a universe. So this kind of stuff is just a light thing for him. So we shouldn't be all enamored with that. It's just the fact that he's ushering in something spectacular. And so now on this day of Pentecost, he, 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 he describes this phenomenon. And then he says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, gave them the ability to speak in other languages. And I don't have time to go through all of it, but the the bottom line is they spoke in other languages and they were all in Jerusalem at at that time for the feasts and all that. And they had come from all over the world to come back. That was kind of the the norm back then. And the Bible says some of them, uh, the Medes and the Persians and others uh, that were in that room, they heard these people speaking in their language the wonderful things of God. And the reason why that was important, they knew they hadn't studied that. So they thought they were drunk. Of course, Peter gets up and he explains what was really going on. That was our opening scripture at the beginning of the service. They're not drunk. You know, Joel, the prophet, talked about this. He referred to it in Joel chapter 2. And so in this particular uh, occurrence, this was the first one where they were filled with the Spirit. Listen now. They were filled with the Spirit, and they spoke in other tongues. Are y'all still here? Now, don't let the devil tell you, oh, you ain't got to speak in tongues. Every place in the New Testament that was recorded, even if it didn't say it in that particular context, you can find where they spoke in tongues when they got filled with the Spirit. We're going to go through a number of cases so that you can dispel all the stuff. Here's what I believe, and this is not original to me, but I've taken this up and and I believe it. Listen, good is the enemy of great. Let me say that one more time. Good is the enemy of great. And sometimes we think we're doing okay because we haven't experienced anything greater, greater. And so we get satisfied. Well, I've served God for 40 years without speaking in tongues, without the power of the Holy Spirit. I must be doing all right. Well, you might be doing all right, but you're not doing as well as you could be. Are y'all still tracking? And so we can, we can settle in on mediocrity when God has something more. You know, the disciples, the apostles could have told Jesus, hey, we got enough. We hung with you three years. We watched you raise the dead. We, we actually participated in casting out devils and healing folks. We did. Hey, we got this, Jesus. We got this. We watched you. You were a good example, good mentor. You live right. We got this. Jesus said, eh, don't you leave here. In other words, don't be deceived to think you got everything that you need to deal with this world, to deal with the assignment that I have for you. You don't leave until you get this power. 
So let's jump to Acts chapter 8. I got to move on. Starting at verse 14. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Notice now, for as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They only had been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 17. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Well, how in the world did they know they received the Holy Spirit? They laid hands on them. How they know they received the Holy Spirit? Verse 18, and when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money saying, give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. How did they know, how did Simon know that they got the Holy Spirit? Because they spoke in tongues. So much so that he wanted the ability to lay hands on people that they would have this demonstration, if you will. All right? This is case number two. (laughs) where they spoke in tongues when they received the Holy Spirit. Number three, Acts chapter 10. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. So he was preaching, talking to them. And those of the circumcision, that means those, those Jewish believers who believe were astonished As many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. Well, how did they know the Holy Spirit had been poured out? For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered, can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just like Just as we have, he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. So we see here's another example where they got filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues on the heels of the Holy Spirit coming into their spirit. Now, I I, I know what you're thinking. That's why you have a pastor. I'm going to tell you. The devil doesn't want you to speak in tongues. He doesn't want you to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't want you to walk in authority. He doesn't want you to walk in truth. He doesn't want you to have literally the level of anointing that you need to break up some of the addictions that you have, some of the bad habits that you have, some of the stuff that you're dealing with, all you need is to rebuke that thing in Jesus' name with enough power that there's a change coming on. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. It's it's, it's the power of God. And I'm just saying, let me go on record in Muncie, Indiana, big time Muncie, Indiana, let me go on record and say, if we could get just about a thousand people to get on one accord just in Muncie and start binding up some stuff. We would see some things change around here. If we could get together, the Baptists and the Methodists and the Pentecostals and the Nazarenes and the Lutherans and everybody who's a true believer in Christ, if we could come together all on one accord in one place and believe God for the changing of our city, for the filling of the Holy Ghost of folks that need God, I'm telling you, we could get some stuff done. And the reason why we don't is because we simple. We want everybody to be in our camp, be like us. I don't have time to really deal with that, but here's the thing. When we come together on one accord, God shows up. He, he, He shows up. 
And so if you're in this church today, if you're watching me online, wherever you are, whenever you get this message, if you are listening to the words that are coming out of my mouth, don't allow the devil to steal what the word says. Don't let him say, well, we don't do that like this in our church. I, 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 I thought it was Jesus' church. That's what I thought. I thought he was in charge. I thought he was the one that's running this stuff. So here's what I want you to understand. I want you to understand that in this particular uh, uh, account, the Jewish believers, because they had the word of God, I don't have time to deal with all that either today. We're going to get there. Um, uh, but they, to the Jews, they were giving, given the word of God. And so now when the church age starts, um, actually it started pretty much with them. And so they were filled with the Spirit. They were ushering in uh, this new way of doing things because Jesus is Lord. We get that. And so now they're wondering, thinking that they are the only ones that are going to be saved. They're the only ones that can be filled with the Spirit because after all, we are the Jews. We special. And they are in their own context but not in this dispensation. You got to have Jesus. <laughs> and so in this, in, in this account, we see here where the apostles let them know, okay, um, they're curious, hey, uh, can we baptize them? Can, 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 can we allow them to be baptized into the church of Jesus Christ? After all, they're Gentiles. And they asked the question, you, you remember, I just read it. And, and, and they put the seal on, they said, can we baptize them who have been filled with the Spirit, who have received the same gift, he, he says, just like we have. So my question is, can you be filled with the Spirit just like we have? The answer is, oh, absolutely you can. No reason not to. All right, here's the, here's the last account. I got to move on here. Uh, Acts chapter 19. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. Everybody say, some disciples. Now, folks has tried to make this something other than what it is because they got their religious stuff going on. These are believers. They just didn't know everything. Any believers in here? You don't know everything either. <laughs> These are disciples, followers of Christ, all right? He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Let me rephrase that a little bit. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became a believer? That's the question. So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. I believe that right now is the problem with America. It's a problem all over the world. We think people know what's up, and they have no idea about the Holy Ghost. They know their religion. They know their book. And I ain't talking about no Bible. I'm talking about their book of discipline in their denomination. They know all of that kind of stuff, but they haven't, you know why they haven't heard about the Holy Ghost? Because their pastor won't teach them. Their pastor won't preach it. Because I'm telling you, faith comes by hearing. If you hear about the Holy Ghost, he's going to break out in this place, and you know somebody might clap. Oh, my God. Somebody might raise their hands in our church. Oh, no. Somebody might holler. Somebody might speak in a tongue. Oh, no. You're going to mess our church up. We want to control stuff. And I get it. I don't think I'm a control freak, but I like what I like. And if, I, if I'm in charge, then I have, listen, I have to resist the temptation to want to control stuff. Sometimes in, in mixed circles, whatever that means, uh, I keep quiet. I ain't got to always talk. I do that on, on purpose. Well, the pastor's here, you want to pray? No, I don't want to pray. You pray. 
Now, I don't mean I don't want to pray. You know, I pray. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, you know, sometimes when you're in leadership, you're in these kind of positions, you know, people expect for you to, to chime in on everything. No, I ain't got to talk all the time. No, no, no. I don't have to do that. And so let, let, let's continue reading here. He said, we haven't heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, okay, into what were you baptized? Now I don't have time. I've said that about 10 times today, haven't I? <laughs> that means, let me see if you will come back next week. Let's see when. No, no I, I don't have time to deal with that. I got, I got to focus here. Um, but listen there's, co- listen, there's a connection between baptism and being filled with the Spirit. There, there's a connection. I, I got to get there sometime. All right, so they said into John's baptism. So they were letting him know where they were. They were at the, at the point of revelation of understanding that John had a baptism. John still had disciples at that point that hadn't heard what was going on. We're going to find out in a minute. And so we have to understand there are people out there that don't know about the Holy Ghost. Or whatever they know, they've been told something crazy. Oh, you better not get over there with them Pentecostals. They're going to have you acting stupid. Do you know what? I'm full of the Holy Ghost, but I got an earned doctor degree. And I got some sense. And you know what? When the Holy Ghost begins to move on the inside, you know what I can do? I can stop. I'm not sure we even knew this back when I was growing up. You know, the music gets going. Nah, 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 nah. Come on, musicians. Get, y'all get back in here right quick. Nah, 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 nah. All that, we, we going at it. So some of y'all don't know nothing about that. Sorry. <laughs> but in the Pentecostal church that I came out of, we would break out in any moment. I mean, and I know some churches, I was just at one a couple months ago. It was intriguing because I said, man, I would love to preach here because you could just say Jesus. Everybody go, ah, hallelujah, I'm Jesus. I mean, you think you're jamming, I'm telling you. But we would go for it. We call it the Pentecostal shuffle. Y'all know what's up. No, 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 no. Now, and nobody really told us this, but by examples, we thought that it was the Holy Ghost doing that. It, it, it might have been inspired. You know, you feel good. You, God gets to moving. But you know what? The Bible says the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So oftentimes, you know, I'm an organist. I've been playing for years. And we keep going. And the drums go. And we're doing our thing. And, you know, Susie's down here. She's going. And see, what you got to learn is when the music stops, you stop and sit your tail down. Oh, Pastor, I just, I just couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. Uh, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But what you're saying now ain't in the Bible. You can stop. So you don't have to be crazy. You can be full of the Holy Ghost and be articulate. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you can be a tongue talker. Oh, yeah, but then in the, meeting, in the board meeting... It might not be time for that. I mean, I've been in school board meetings. I feel the Holy Ghost moving on the inside of me, but I don't break out. Now, if he moved me, I will. <laughs> no, but there's a time for everything. And, and so you've got control. You don't, you don't have to worry about embarrassing yourself. Are y'all still here? So they were baptized into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Notice now verse 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about 12 in all. I don't know where the musicians, I thought I said, come on. Didn't I? I was preaching so good, they just got distracted. (laughs) Yeah. 
Here's, here's the point of this message, and we're not done. This is, listen, this is kingdom right here. This is kingdom. This is not just church. The church is a part of the kingdom, but in the kingdom of God, we ha- listen, we have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We, we, we just have to be. And so what, I, what I've tried to describe for you biblically This is not something Keith made up. It's not something that I just dreamed about. When I study that word, we have a case on the day of Pentecost where we have all these Jewish believers around, and they get filled with the Holy Spirit. And every time there was a group, nobody really was isolated. Everybody had people around. So we have people around here, so we're going to believe God that you will be filled with the Spirit today. Now, you don't have to be around people. I'm just saying it's just easier when you're in the attitude of worship, when you're in a spirit of worship. Yeah. And so you have these Jewish believers. Then the, the scripture that I, that I quoted in, I think, Acts 10, I believe, is where uh, there are Gentiles. So w- w- here's what I believe. As I've studied, I believe God is letting us know that Jews can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Gentiles can be filled with the Holy Ghost. And even those who didn't have the revelation that we have, they were in the middle. They were uh, John's disciples, and they had been baptized uh, in, in, in John's baptism as unto repentance. But the Bible says as soon as they heard the word, the, okay, John was pointing to Jesus. As soon as that revelation came, they got baptized in Jesus' name. So they became loyal to him. And then, Paul, they laid hands on them. Listen now. They laid hands on them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues and prophesy. Are y'all tracking with me? All right. All right, so play something. We have a list, I think. We have a, come on, team. I'm over time almost already. Let's stand on our feet. We at A. So uh, one of our songs today in our, in our worship time It's called Deeper. Take me deeper than I've been before. Anybody want to go deeper? I want to go deeper. Take me further. Lord, I long for more. Take me higher. Whew than I've ever been before. And I'm just saying, you know, we've been praying for a family that lost a young man and went by the calling hours yesterday and had another commitment that I had to go to. But this young man died tragically. And it's just, it's, it just hurt. You know, I didn't even know the young man, but it hurt my heart just thinking about A young life that leaves like that. This world is tough. And let me just let you know, we don't know what anybody is really going through. We put on our game face, even as the pastor. That's why y'all are supposed to pray for me. You don't don't know the things that are on our hearts. We don't know what's on the heart. All these people in here, we don't know what they're dealing with. So we got to pray. And I'm just saying, we need the Holy Ghost. One of the attributes, listen to me now. And Jesus said this. One of the attributes of the Holy Spirit is he is the comforter. Now, here's how I, you know, I'll let you into my world a little bit. When I, when I find out something about what God's Word says, I kind of turn it around so that I really get the full gist of what is being said. Now, if Jesus says the Holy Spirit is the comforter, that means he comes to comfort. 
I mean, I, you know, I'm not a road scholar, but that, you know, that's pretty important. So I turn that thing around to think, okay, if I don't have the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to be comforted at the same level. Are y'all still here? So that means whatever the Holy Spirit is, whatever he brings, if I don't have him, I'm not going to have what he has. So I want to encourage you. Here's how I want to do this. I know we're over time. It's okay. The restaurants are still going to be open. They'll wait on you to eat that barbecue. I want as many people as can to come to this altar. You can fill the aisles. We're just going to worship. And I'm just going to, I'm going to pray. And we're just going to believe God. Whoever you are, we're not going to call you out. We're not going to pick you out. All of our altar workers, if you're an altar worker, I need you to just come to this area and just be paying attention. It's interesting, when we read in the Bible the number of times where somebody else was around and helping to facilitate being filled with the Spirit, and they laid hands on them and they began to speak. The Apostle Paul laid hands on the 12 and they began to speak. And so we're going to worship. And if you're sensing that God is moving upon you, just receive. You don't have to holler or anything like that. Just allow the Spirit of God to come in. I told you earlier, here's the criteria. Just ask him. So we're going to all ask him together in just a moment. Lord, fill us with the Holy Spirit. It, those of you who are in the room who, are, who have been filled before, listen, we're going to ask him for more. Fill us again. And I'm going to ask our altar workers that are lined up across here, when you see people right in front of you, you ain't got to knock them down. Just lay your hands on them. Because that's scriptural. And we're just going to believe God that the Holy Ghost is going to fall upon this whole church. Whether you came up here, whether you're in your seat, we're believing God for the power of God. Because I'm telling you, we need the Holy Ghost. We need Him. Come on, sing it. I need more of you. So I decree in the name of Jesus, freedom in this house. In the name of Jesus, I declare, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive in Jesus' name. And just when he comes on you, just receive. Come on, worship. Come on, worship. Come on, come on. Worship, worship, him, worship.
Listen to me now. The Holy Spirit, listen, the Holy Spirit has to be in there before you can speak. So sometimes he comes in, well, not even sometimes. When you ask him to come in, he comes in. Y'all tracking with that? Somebody say amen. When you ask him to come in, he comes in. Now, the ability to speak in other languages, in other tongues, to speak to God is in there. But he's not going to make you speak. So, the scripture says, they began to speak 
as the Spirit gave them utterance. In other words, when you begin to speak, God will give you the language. He'll give you the utterance. But you have to speak. And oftentimes, and I'm saying this, and we're getting ready to go home, uh, I'm saying this because oftentimes we think the Holy Ghost is just going to take us over. No, you have to speak. It's, it's by faith. You've heard me before. Everything you're going to get from God is going to be by faith. And so you've got to open up your mouth. So as we're in an atmosphere like this, some of you, when you leave this service, you're going to sense the power of God and you're going to speak in tongues in your car. You're going, you're going to sense the power of God and the rest of this day, at some point in time, it's going to hit you. And you're going to open your mouth, maybe when nobody is around, I don't know. But he's in there. Come on, somebody say he's in there. He's in there. He wants to come in. If you ask him for the Holy Ghost, he's not going to give you a devil. So you have what you need on the inside. We're going to dismiss right from here. Father, thank you for the power of God. And we know we're marking time. We will not be the same. God, help those that are filled today to walk this thing out. This is not magic, but it's the power of God. A police officer has a gun and a badge, but nothing happens unless they pull the trigger. They got the authority. They got the power. But nothing happens. No bullets go anywhere without that trigger getting pulled. So we thank you that we got the power and we have the authority. Now help us to pull the Holy Ghost trigger to do what you have called us to do in the name of Jesus. So we thank you that you have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, that we're the head and not the tail, we're above only and not beneath. We thank you, Father, that we are blessed in every area of our finances. We thank you, God, that our children are blessed to a thousand generations that our health springs forth speedily and whatever our hands touch prospers in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for being such a great God. We thank you for this weekend. We thank you for those who have died to allow us this freedom to worship your name, to come and say the name of Jesus in public. We thank you and we give your name the praise. As we leave, we just declare to you it's a privilege to serve you. Thank you so much for every person, every family, every life. Bless all of our guests in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen. More of you. More of you. God bless you. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you next week.